Hi and welcome. Today we want to take a look at something that we call in our organization the flexible position control. And what this allows you to do is know exactly which positions you can hire for in your organization. Now, obviously in our organization, we're a huge hospital, so we have lots of different jobs and lots of different positions. So what we did was roll them up into a skill description. So it kind of categorizes a lot of the, you know, the job codes that are pretty generally close to each other into some type of group. So it's a lot easier and a lot less data that you have to look at on the screen, but you could always drill down into the job and you're going to see that. So this was actually built in Tableau and this was a report that was already existing in Excel. And what I was tasked to do was see if we can create the data set around it, uh, working with our IT team and then take that data and build some data sets and then bring it into Tableau. So that it's automated before it was a lot of, getting a report from this person, getting this report from that person in HR and getting the roster from these people and stuff from the recruiters and putting it all together in some Excel worksheet that was super complex. There was only one person in the hospital that knew how to really update that. So if he was on vacation, it didn't get updated. Um, the data lagged because it was only updated at the end of the month once they did a data pool, a data refresh. So. It had like that month lag. So if someone got hired, you still showed that you had available positions uh, maybe hired throughout the month, but you really didn't get into that whole thing. So, yeah, I was just asked to said, hey, you know, Jared, can you somehow automate this? Put it in Tableau. Let's build a data set around it so no one needs to touch it. And we build it once and it's done. And only thing we're doing is adding new things to it. So this was the final result of what we received. Sorry, I'm having my morning coffee. It's really good. So this does involve some calculations in which we will go through in another video. One, I've rebuilt this dashboard a few times and still don't fully understand exactly what connects to what. Um, the person that actually originally did it helped us with the formulas and we broke it down and tried to make it a, you know, a little bit better. But right here we have a dynamic header up here. And this right here is actually just a worksheet. And this is really gonna be more on the design side than it will be the actual practical side, but it kind of gives you a gist and some thoughts and ideas what you can do for your organization. And so this is all one worksheet right here. And the header, instead of using the title feature inside the dashboard, I use the worksheet. And what that worksheet does is has this a static text. And this right here just returns the date and the month, the month and the year. In there and I should put a space in there. That's uh, one of the things I'm just saying, but I would put a little space in there, but this is dynamic. So as the month changes, you use the um, level of detail max date. So you want to get the last date that's in your data set and this will always return that month. Here we have the, and for this happens to be for a hospital, you know, what the department description is and what the number of the cost center is. And this just kind of gives some general stuff. So, the part right here, this is dynamic. So depending on which part of the hospital you're in, it shows the name, shows your department and your unit of measure. So this department unit of measure, that's again, a string that I typed in, but then this part is dynamic based on something coming from the data set where it rotates, whether you're in patient days or calendar days or surgeries or whatever it may be. So this is dynamic and let me see if I can demonstrate it on another cost in here. So as you can see, a user can just come in, type in their cost center, and it should update. This may take a second. I don't know why on prem it's a lot faster. And whenever I remote in, it seems like it takes a little while. Cool. So that updated. So the data updated, but I think these departments kind of have the same kind of thing. And I'm not, again, I don't memorize all the cost centers, but um, yeah, as you can see, it updates just the basic information. So now we're in West Wing 11. So we come right here. This is the core daily volume. And this is one of the, this is like the basis of the whole report. In this core daily volume, what they decided to do was take the second or third lowest. And what we're doing in our next iteration is allowing the CFOs to go in there and choose the lowest census point. And so what this is, is it takes the, the volume for the month, it's historically trending. So you can look right here divides it by the number of days in the month, and it gives you an average unit of service per day. So as you go down this list, it's like this uh, core daily volume is actually coming, you know, kind of coming from this list. Again, it's all in the data set level. So, and what it does is it looks at the data set and it says, what is the second lowest um, 
average unit of service that you've had in the past 12 months and whatever that is, return it. And that number is going to be put right here. And then all of these other calculations are somewhat based off of that theory of you need to be staffing at least, you know, at the level of your second lowest month, your third lowest month, maybe some may be the, you know, the first, like it depends on, and that's what, that's the flexibility that the CFOs wanted in the second version. So now we're going to create, um, I don't know if we're going to create another data set, but it's going to connect to another data set that lets us know what census point we should be returning. So say if these are all of our census point and 25.7 happened to be our lowest, then the, it would return the second lowest would be 26.6. But if the other CFO is like, nah, I want this department to be at this third, then it'll go up here, find the 28.5 and return it here. Right now, this is just displaying six months trending. And you also have a little filter right here so I can change it to if I want seven months in the view or whatever it may be. So this is dynamic, but this filter right here does not affect this one part right here because this never changes. This does not change. This does not change, but this can change because this is trending historical data, as you can see in this one chain. So these parts are stationary. So when you build in the worksheet, I don't just do a months in view or something like that and say, attach it to the entire data source. No. You put it worksheet by worksheet so that you can affect all these different worksheets um, individually. So nonetheless, you go down here and it, it gives you a number that's available to hire. And essentially, it's your target core minus your FTE staff. So these are the people that you actually have, your current employees and people that have already committed to coming to work for you as an organization. And this target core FTEs is how many FTEs you should have, um, how many FTEs you should be staffed at based on your second lowest thing right here. And all these calculations kind of just break it down and do all these different, you know, calculations to get to that number. So again, this is like a ballpark. It's saying that, hey, you should have 56.9 FTEs in your department. Currently you have 50.7. So you're available to hire 6.2 FTEs. Now that's just not enough because then a department manager can say, okay, I got 6.2 FTEs. I'll just hire a bunch of uh, ANRPs or whatever it may be that you need within that department. And that's just not the case always. So in the background, there's a job code data set. Uh, there's a job code data set that gives me all the different job codes. And what we did was have um, one of our HR people break them down into categories. Now these categories existed in the existing report, but she went in there and she individually updates them for the newest categories as the job codes are created so that you can group them together and it's a little bit more manageable for the data. So I, registered nurses obviously are one of the highest paid people in there next to management. So now I can look in there, I can say, oh, wow, I can only hire 2.2 .2 of the 6.2 FTEs in RN. So I can bring in two full-time RNs or whatever it may be. But now I can see it on the screen and I know exactly what I can hire. I know that I'm pretty set right here, um, pretty set right here. Here I should be cautious. I can bring in a part-time manager or something like that, but I have 0.5 in an FTE, which I'm probably not gonna be able to fill. But this gives you exactly what you can hire. So as a CFO, if you're going in there and you're trying to approve requisitions, you can actually look in here and say, okay, you just submitted two recs or three recs for RNs, and that's gonna take you know 1.8 FTEs. You're already kind of on the brink. I don't think I'm gonna approve this third you know, FTE for an RN. So, but you have that kind of insight and you can make that knowledge and make that decision. And if your department, again, it still has that, um, how would I like to say that, that human element where you go in there and you know the department is in need of this or you know someone's gonna be leaving. Obviously it doesn't take that into account in here, like knowing that someone's gonna leave or and someone's not gonna return in two weeks, you can start staffing up. And sometimes, I mean, it takes, from what I hear, it takes well over a month to just staff, staff someone so that they're useful within a department as far as like finding someone, getting them in for orientation, training them in their department and doing all those different things. So it could take well over 16 weeks from what I hear um, in certain specialties. So this right here just gives you your budget percentage. So we took the budget for the department based on their job codes and we said, okay, you allocated 57.2% of your budget for registered nurse categories, 9.74. So this is all from the budget. We put how many budgeted FTEs you had within that time period. This is what you currently have staffed. 
this is what you're projected. And so the difference between what you're projected to do based off that core number and all these calculations that we did once we split it out. And that's one of the more difficult things that you will run into as you start to design this. When we built this, it aggregates over three different data sets. One is a budgeted data set. Uh, another one is for job codes. And then we decided to do a cost center data set. In hindsight, we might go back and do combine at least two of the data sets so that you have cost center and uh, job level details in the same data set. It was a little dicey on whether to go with three different data sets to do two. Like in the beginning, you didn't know exactly what you needed. So we tried to mock it out a few times. And I think in the end, I would probably combine the data sets. It gets into an aggregation problem but it's something that can be solved through level of detail calculations, um, just of repeating data. Again, that comes down to your analyst knowing the data, and hopefully I can get into the data set a little bit later. Here we have the full time, so this gives you just a quick head count. This is how many people you have currently in your department. So I know you have 46 full time people, uh, one part time person. This person is really uh, just part time, they have 0.5 FTE. So this just gives you kind of like a quick overview and all this stuff is really, but this is really the key important stuff when we did conditional formatting, which is actually one of the more difficult parts. And one thing with uh, aggregating in Tableau, always make sure that your grand total matches up. This is actually a separate worksheet because we cannot, um, just based on the way I did the calculations and probably using a level of detail calculation would have solved this in the beginning. But just due to the way I'm pulling across different data sets, I couldn't do level of detail on everything. So I ended up having to make this a separate worksheet down the bottom so that it would aggregate out to 100. So if you look at this, it all comes out to 100. But if you were to just hit the analysis to uh, at the top of your Tableau workbook, if you were to hit uh, analysis, uh, go to totals and add your column total, it would say like 150 percent. This number would be exaggerated. This would be all over the board. So I ended up having just to make another worksheet duplicate this worksheet, remove all of the categories and everything out, and the grand total matches up perfectly. Again, because I'm pulling from three different data sets, we're filtering just for the cost center. The aggregation tableau just, you know, wasn't working the way we wanted it to. So I had to do, you know, had to get creative with it. So that is a separate worksheet. Um, make sure if you run into that problem that you do check it. And that's the good thing about this. Like a lot of numbers should tie back to other things. So this 50.7 there should be there. So by having that, it allows you to make sure you tie back to something. Um, and I'll just get to the tabs, some of the more fun things. So we also have a vacancy report. So this allows this department manager to go in there and say, okay, cool. What do I have that, you know, what, what requisitions do I have open? Cool. I have um, one management rec open. Okay. The, it's open and it's for one FTE. I have two registered nurses coming in there. Uh, and obviously there's like with benefits, without benefits and everything like that. So as you start to get in there, you know, uh, point nine is um, with benefits and there's all these other things in there. But you can look and you say, okay, like I have two, two recs that are in there. So it actually looks like I have about, oh, I have four actually. So I have two requisitions that are open and I have two nurses that have, or I have 1.8 FTEs, I don't wanna say nurses, I'm assuming that they're full time, just based on the uh, mix on there. But I have two uh, full time, and it tells you right here, nurses that have already accepted the offer. So we're just waiting for them to come in. Once they start, I think there's like a week later, then they move off of this offer accepted, and they'll move down to the actual roster. And this just groups everything together. So this is like a quick view. So if someone says, "All right, cool. Like, what do you have down your pipeline?" You can say, "I have uh, 2.8 FTEs open and 2.8." FTEs accepted, and that goes for my nursing and for my orderly techs. We still haven't found anyone for our management position, and that's going to be for an AM. So, like, it's really quick. Like, you can come in here and you know exactly what's going on in your organization. Right now, they have to log into like Taleo and try to see if they can get a rec update or go into Lawson or whatever it may be. Like, you just come here and the data is right there for you. And here it breaks down all the requisitions. So, even if you don't know, like, Again, in here we have four requisition. Uh, it's probably going to be about four recs for um, nurses, and you one, two, three, four, exactly, full time nurses. I can go in here and I can say, okay, cool. This rec number for this job code, which is a clinical staff nurse, they're working at 12, seven, uh, a 1272 full time. This rec is open, and I can tell exactly 
what it is that's going on down here and I can see the status of my requisitions and I can see what's been accepted, what's been open, so on and so forth. And we created these like little buttons right here. As you know, when you build dashboards, Tableau is not the greatest for retrieving data or information or anything like that. So we built custom worksheets that when you click on this link, it downloads all the data that's in this view. And that gets into a little bit of URL um, string injection to make sure that it updates for the cost center and things like that, which we can teach you later. Uh, going over here, this gives us a current roster of just different employees and things like that, their shift, things like that. I created a print ready version just because I know that they're gonna be taking this across the organization and yeah, we're still old school. We still print everything out. We still hand things in on paper half the time. <laughs> Not for the most part, but just, you know, some of the more clinical areas and it's just what you're used to. So we wanted to create a print ready version. So if you physically were handing in a piece of paper to someone, you can print it out and you didn't have to worry about it not fitting the screen and whatever it may be. And then we have this executive view, which the uh, CFO said that they want it. It just allows them to kind of get an overview of the entire department. So you can filter it by financial director or supervisor. I uh, should have put indirect supervisor, I forgot to update that. But yeah, and it just kind of gives you like the same data, like what's open, what's accepted, any offers that are extended out there. So we extend the offer out for, you know, this tower for this person and you can get that information and then you can still download this data. That was like one of the more, more critical things. They did one and you can download all the core center data and all these things like that. So that is the report. And actually I'll kind of show you, we had to do something quirky with this one. It was, this pulls in all the data for the entire like NZ. So it was a little cumbersome. Let me pull in, you know, something small. So as you can see, this updates based on the roles and everything that we pull in. And someone can just go in there and if they want to bring all this data out and dump it into Excel, they can go down to their, uh, go down to the bottom and just download all this data and then start to manipulate it. Gives them all the departments and everything like that. I've got to put the department names on the update as well. But yeah, so that is the end of this presentation and that is our dashboard. And because this takes you to a worksheet, I had to make it creative for you to be able to get back to the dashboard. So you just click on the worksheet. But yeah, um, that's all I have for you. And this is our flexible position control.